My father was an amateur photographer who taught me photo basics before I even owned a camera. My dedication at 14 didn't last long. My parents gave me a 35mm at my high school graduation and changed my life. This image was taken in Montana at 1am during a full moon, utilizing an 8 second handheld exposure. My father and mother always encouraged me to follow my passion. I never went to photo school, but that allowed me to learn by experimentation. Tokyo, late in the evening, captured with 3200 film and pushed one stop using available light because I didn't own a flash. In Paris, I was drawn to the Eiffel Tower. Industrial structures fascinated me. I ran around whatever city I was in and did street photography. Macro photography was also a blast, creating images that the viewer couldn't recognize what it was a part of until they were told. I just loved the mystery it created. Speaking up has always been a part of my personality. This image came about after talking to two construction workers I ran into in my local bagel shop. One was the owner of a company building a high-rise above the old Roseland Ballroom. Within the hour, I was on top of the crane they were using, 63 stories up. The Queensboro Bridge was in the midst of a two-year paint job. While driving over the bridge, I saw this circle in a square on a lower deck. I wanted to capture the rust before it was sandblasted and repainted. I knew it would be at least 20 years before it looked like that again. The next day I was able to meet with the engineer in charge. It took some convincing, but he granted access for me to climb the bridge with the paint inspector. The distressed metal and all of those glorious lines. Being up 400 feet over the river was a spectacular view. My sister Nancy was a talented artist with painting, drawing, and poetry. When I was eight, I wanted to be like her, but I couldn't draw. So I would use a ruler to draw straight lines in every direction, creating a tangled web of intersecting lines. Then I would fill in the shapes with either mixed colors or black and white to create my own design. Subconsciously, those drawings I did became a powerful part of my attraction to lines, shapes, and three-dimensional spaces. I am fascinated with electric towers, seen as an eyesore to many, but for me, there is boundless beauty. They are immovable objects that never change, but as I moved around them, new geometric shapes appeared. I placed colors in the selected shapes, and the final image makes it hard to detect which planes they exist on. This is my homage to M.C. Escher and his fantastic altered perspective of the world. This is my studio. It's located in the Flatiron District in Manhattan. I use either 35mm or medium format cameras when shooting, but unlike my early days, now I have the ability to paint with light using flash equipment. At 40 years old, I became a full-time photographer and all my previous work had occurred on location. Lighting allowed me to open new areas of exploration. I began photographing flowers while marveling at their infrastructure and architecture. This scabiosa showed me how delicate and fragile a flower could be, looking like fine rice paper container holding its treasured seed of life with a soft green bed underneath. Photographing dance sparked a new passion. My desire to capture everything in camera made me strive to achieve the perfect frozen moment. In Nautilus, the dancer was strong and unwavering. The fabric was thrown from off camera, allowing me to capture the contrast of her with the softness of the fabric. Employing my theater and dance experience from college brought me to a new level. A year later, I was asked to photograph the cover of the 80th anniversary issue for Dance Magazine. That was my first cover. Subsequently, I produced more than 50 covers for Dance Magazine over the next five years. Equipped with a whole new arsenal of tools, I took the dancers outside to marry existing architecture and the dancers' sculptural bodies. We were on site by sunrise to ensure we had the fabulous Brooklyn Bridge almost entirely to ourselves. Battery-operated strobe lighting brought my two worlds together. A cover shoot for Dance Magazine ended early. Their staff returned to their offices. The dancer and I went outside in a steady rain, catching this improvisational moment. 
The gentleman in the umbrella had no idea that he was about to become part of our collaboration. Timing is everything. Stan Strong is currently at Silvermine Galleries in the 70th A1 exhibition. After 12 years of shooting dance, I needed to create something completely different. The concept for apparitions is to have a narrative where the dancer and their spirit self are in the same image, using only one frame to capture the present with the past or future simultaneously. Each of these images begins with a discussion of our personal or learned experiences. Then we use improvisation to find the story and the final position. Play or pray conveys a scenario we are unsure of how this relationship is going to conclude. Is it perhaps a playful moment between two lovers or a predatory pursuit of another? All in is the portrayal of being fully committed to the belief you have in an individual's truth, even if that individual is you. Ready for magic to happen? Allowing the world to be yours? Hoping the water is deep? Allow your spirit self to be the guide or shaman. Many times in life we are knocked down. At 33 years old, I had emergency open heart surgery while finishing two master's degrees in theater. That and all my experiences in between gave me a resurgence and led me back to where my passion was strongest, photography. The last image in this Pekka Kucha brings us near the end. Sister shows us how the power of unity bonds women together in solidarity. This series has allowed me to rediscover the joy of embarking on an adventure. We share our most intimate stories and experiences, seen and unseen, revealing a narrative and fueling this dance movement. Thank you for joining me.